It was raining super hard earlier and I got caught in it and I got soaked and it really sucked. I'm not gonna lie, but I'm inside and warm and dry and very thankful for that. And I have a list of tools that I found oddly useful in one way or another that I wanted to go over. So first of all is webcam eyes, which I've actually been using the past five or 10 videos because what it does is it will automatically mount up your DSLR or according to them, pretty much um, any modern camera um, to, I mean, intended to be used as a webcam, but obviously video recording is easily possible as well. I just record with FFmpeg still. And this is a great tool because it's actually just a 200 line shell script. Um, you can go read over it here. And you know, as with everything I go over, I would recommend like look at source code before you run some random program from some random person. But anyways, in my experience, this has actually been flawless. I've tried it with three different cameras now, uh, two Canon and one Sony, and it was just perfect every time. Like literally plug in the camera and you run the command and it is there and ready to go. Um, I, I found it while looking into G Photo too, because I was gonna make my own script to do something very similar to this. And then I found this project and it just worked. So I'm very glad that I found this finally. And hopefully this helps somebody else. If you have, you know, a situation where you wanna be using a camera as either a webcam or a recording device in some way. And the art on this page is really cute, by the way. Like I wanted to mention that it's, I, I don't know. It's like if corporate art wasn't bad, that's what this art is. It's really cute. Anyways, um, let me put that on my other monitor. I wanted to look at an alternative to DF. DF, as you probably know, um, lists out disk space on all of your disks, but it's kind of hard to look at it and get, you know, an idea in a glance of how much disk space you have. So there's a tool called uh, disk spelled with a Y there that is colorized and better formatted and has this little graph for each disk. And honestly, I feel like this is just so much easier to look at it and get the information I need quickly rather than having to like try to look through DF that's all in one color and it by default lists all the temp file systems and all that sort of stuff. Um, and disk has pretty much the options you would need in terms of filtering and changing the column order and sorting order. You could even output as JSON or CSV if you wanted to do that. And uh, this is actually, it's written in Rust. I've benchmarked it just a little bit to see how it compared to DF and it was like marginally slower, but really only marginally. So um, yeah, I've been using this for a while now. It's a lot easier to use than DF just in terms of like looking at something, getting a glance of the information I need to know. Uh, anyways, so next up is something that's technically not a uh, program, but it's extremely useful. So I feel like it fits this list. Um, and that is the Pure Bash Bible uh, by the same person who actually created Pywall and NeoFetch and Kiss Linux and like a bunch of other stuff you've probably heard of. Um, this is just such an invaluable tool if you're doing shell scripting, but honestly beyond that too. Um, so it's got essentially bash alternatives to things you would normally be trying to do with external tools if you didn't know how to do it in bash. So uh, for example, strings, um, a lot of the time you'd be using sed or awk or something else in order to take care of this sort of string manipulation. Uh, but a lot of the time you could be just doing it directly in bash, which for optimization reasons, you should be when possible, right? Unless there's a specific reason why you can't or don't want to be doing it in bash, there's no reason not to do the really simple string processing in bash because it's gonna be far more optimized than calling something heavier like awk to do it, right? So um, this is really useful if you're either trying to learn bash or you're trying to spruce up your own scripts, optimize your own scripts. Uh, but beyond that, you know, conceptually, just the idea of if I'm using one tool, I should see if I can do what I need to do with that one tool instead of going for, you know, some external tool. Um, and it, you know, you don't have to be in shell or bash in order to apply that logic. Like no matter what you're coding in, the concept of, okay, if I can do this directly with what I'm already using, then why use an external tool? Um, I think just conceptually, that's worth keeping in mind, you know, as you're, as you're working on optimizing your programs. Um, and there's also the pure SH Bible, which is essentially the same thing, but POSIX SH alternatives. So um, equally useful if you're trying to learn any of this sort of stuff. I, I, I don't know. I feel like this is just a guide that I pull up constantly whenever I'm doing any sort of shell scripting. So I, I figured I should at some point like mention this just because I, genuinely use this thing constantly. It's it's so helpful. And I think he even made it into a book, which is kind of cool. I don't know. It, it's worth it. I mean, it's really, really, really a good guide. 
All right, so um, I wanted to go over Zephyr a bit since I mentioned that in my last video and I didn't really elaborate on it. And somebody actually asked like, what is what does it do? How does it work or something like that? So let me actually show you what Zephyr does. So this is a miniature DWM opened in my DWM here. Um, no, it's essentially a nested X server that you're running as an application. So if you're doing anything that requires that sort of idea there, this is really useful. There's a bunch of use cases. So first of all, um, if you're just going to be developing a window manager and you need to be refreshing it constantly and seeing changes as you're making them, this is very useful. It's This is literally just, you know, a development build of DWM that I was running here. Control shift is going to lock your mouse in and out. Uh, just quit it normally. To start it up, it's, it's very simple. You literally just run essentially like one command. I mean, two technically, but um, yeah, so just Zephyr with some flags on it and then uh, display one DWM. Let me go ahead and open the Arch Wiki article for it. Um, there's a few other use cases that I think are worth mentioning. So first of all, what's actually mentioned on the Arch Wiki is it might be useful to work around a badly written application. For example, an application that's going to constantly recreate its window and steal focus, which I was actually dealing with a couple years ago. And I wish I had found this tool then because um, this is perfect if you have something that's like every two seconds gonna steal focus just because it's so poorly written, but like you have to use it. Um, yeah, I wish I wish I had had this then because I had to like just leave it running and go do something else while waiting for it. Cause it would just every two seconds steal focus away from, you know, whatever other application I was in. So that's one of the uses. The other use that I, you know, already mentioned is if you're trying to test a window manager and the arch wiki describes, you know, how to do that, how to set that up. Um, but a third use in which actually the arch wiki says that it needs expansion on this. And the, the brief explanation here is that X11 really does not sandbox applications. Um, it's, you know, poor or no sandboxing, meaning Zephyr will allow you to essentially sandbox if you need to sandbox for security reasons or whatever else related to that, this will allow you to do that. So that's kind of, if, if anything, that's the most important reason that Zephyr is, you know, to be used for, right? Um, anyway, so I wanted to go over, let me copy the link for it. I wanted to go over a patch for some of the core utils tools, uh, copy and move, um, which you might think copy and move. Why would I need a patch for that? So this is sort of an interesting patch because it adds progress bars to copy and move, which you might think, why not just use rsync, which most of the time, yes, you probably just want to use rsync because rsync is a great utility and it does all sorts of stuff. And I should probably make a video dedicated to it because of how good it is. But if you were in a situation for whatever reason you couldn't or didn't want to use rsync, maybe there is some arbitrary reason that, you know, you might encounter that you can't use rsync, um, this would have a progress bar for copy and move. So it's about a thousand lines. Um, you can read through it if you want to read through it. And there's actually an install script just to go ahead and install it for you, or you can install it manually. Obviously, like I said, read through code before you run it. Um, but anyways, you can install through bash or through fish. Bash version works for ZSH as well. Um, and I actually, I installed it and went ahead and set up an alias. So I could just go ahead and just demonstrate it here. Uh, I should have, yeah, file.zip. And let me just copy that here. And we've got, you know, a progress bar. Gonna go ahead and copy it. Um, essentially, I don't know. It does what's on the tin, right? Um, and it's funny, they actually said the original author sent the patch to the core utils team, but they didn't want to merge the patch because move and copy are considered feature complete, which I can understand. But I feel like this is just one of those things that like, if you're aware it exists and then one day you're in a situation where you actually need this particular thing, then, you know, it's kind of useful. So I don't know. I just thought it was kind of cool. Anyways, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Peace.